Swift Data's model objects are powered by the same observation system that make observable classes work, which means changes to your Swift Data objects are automatically picked up by Swift UI, so your model and UI always stay in sync. This support extends to the bindable property wrapper we looked at previously, which means we get delightfully straightforward object editing. To demonstrate this, we're going to start with a simple user class with a handful of properties. I'll make a new file in here in Xcode. I'll choose Swift file. And I'll call this thing user.swift. Let's add an import for Swift data. And now we're going to say at model class user has a name string, a city string, and a join date date. Then an initializer inside for those three properties. Now we can make a model container and a model context in our app struct. Uh, as again in our main uh, Swift data project app like before. Over here, we'll add an import for Swift data. And then say below our window group, model container for user.self. That. Now, when it comes to editing these user objects, we want to make a new view called something like edit user view, and then give it the bindable property wrapper on a user so we get bindings for it. So let's give that a try now. I'll press Command N, choose Swift UI view, call this thing edit user view, and then we'll say uh, this expects to be given at bindable var user is a user and the body will make a form editing the three properties we made earlier so i'll say there's a form with a text field for name bound to text of user.name with dollar signs we get bindings here then text field city with text bound to user.city and then a date picker called join date with selection bound to user.joinDate. We'll then add a navigation title of edit user and a nav bar title display mode of dot in the line. That is identical to how we've used a regular observable class object before. And yet now Swift data is taking care of automatically writing out all our changes to permanent storage. It is completely transparent to us. Now, if you want to use Xcode's previews here, down here, you've got to pass a sample object in, and that in turn means making a custom configuration and a container for it. So we'd say here, there's a do block, uh, and inside there, we will say, make our configuration, uh, a model configuration, with is stored memory only set to true. Then make a container for that using try, model container for our model object type with that configuration being passed in. And now we have those, bring in the uh, user object itself. So we'll say user uh, is a new user with a name of uh, Taylor Swift, Swift with an F ideally. There we go. City is Nashville, join date can be just now. And now we can send back an edit user view with that user in place, injecting the model container into the environment so it can carry on working as normal. I obviously want to catch any errors here as well. I'll do a catch block saying, send back the text of fail to create container. Oops, contain, there we are, boom, with error localized description being passed back. So we can see what went wrong on the screen. Now, it's complaining uh, because I haven't added an import Swift data. That's my fault. Um, don't forget to do that, folks. Otherwise, I have big problems. Import Swift data. Data. There we go. Much happier. Uh, and now we can make a really simple user editing app out of this by adding a, a new user when a button's pressed, then using programmatic navigation to go straight to the new user for editing. So there's no ad screen. It's adding and editing at the same time. Let's build this up step by step because a few things happen at the same time here. Uh, back in content view.swift here, we're gonna start off with an 
import of Swift data. I'll forget it once, but I won't forget it twice. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and then we'll add properties to access the model context, uh, get a query of all our users, and a programmatic navigation path of our users. So we can push to a new user screen on demand. So I'm gonna say we have environment of our model context. So we can add things to that easily. Then a query sorting by the user's name of all users and that navigation path too. So we can do programmatic navigation. I'll say at state private var path is an array of user like that. And now this whole body property here, this is going to be a navigation stack with its path bound to dollar path. We used that previously. Let me change that path dynamically here. Inside there will be a list of all our users with one user coming in. And in there, one row will be a navigation link with its value bound to our user and its contents being the user's name in a text view. That's it. Then we'll have a navigation title saying users is fine. And a navigation destination like this for that type. Pass me the user that was chosen and send it to edit user view like so, and now we just need a way to actually add users. And if you think about it, like I said, adding and editing users are very, very similar things. And so the easiest thing to do is basically create a new user object with empty or default property values, insert into the model context, then immediately navigate to that by changing our path array to contain that new user value. And so I'll add a toolbar modifier here the button saying add user system image plus and then say our user is a new user with uh, no name no city and join date of now i'll put that straight away into cord uh, so data by saying model object insert the user and then adjust our path property straight away make our user in the path push that new user for editing right now. And that's gonna work, that's it. That's gonna work straight away. I'm here on the screen, I'll press plus, boom, in comes the editing view straight away. I'm gonna say we have, uh, let's do it on the harbor keyboard please. Uh, harbor keyboard please, you can do it, Xcode. No, I've got soft keyboard only, cool, okay. Uh, T, A, oh, I've got no keyboard at all, cool. Let's try that again, I think Xcode's having a little, uh, meltdown in front of me right now. Here's our user. Let's try again. Taylor Swift Nashville. Uh, join date, you know, whenever. First of November. And go back. And there's Taylor. Let's press plus again. I'll try another one. Let's do Adele Adkins. Uh, I think she's in Las Vegas right now. Uh, I don't know when she joined, but let's put it back uh, last year. Boom. Uh, and you'll see it updates straight away. It's all working really nicely. I was another famous singer, uh, me, not, <laughs> Bath, uh, here and whatever. And my dogs arrives too. As you can see, it's sliding in brilliantly. Uh, and this is a great way to add and edit users very, very quickly. Bindable is doing all the work of synchronizing data for us back to the original list and back to Swift data as well. Come on then. Uh, it's really, really nice. Now, this approach, if you look on your phone, is exactly what Apple's own Notes app does. We press that new note button, boom, it slides the editing screen in for the notes straight away, adding it as a blank note. Come on, then, come on. Um, that's the same thing they do. What they add to it, by the way, is an extra step. If you go back to the previous screen without adding a note, it deletes the notes. You aren't ending lots and lots of empty notes here. Anyway, the main thing is editing the user, this part up here, that's really all we need at Bindable. It's no different from editing a regular observable class. And actually, all that's happening here is behind the scenes, Swift is doing all the hard work of getting it persistent storage for us. It's really, really nice. It's saved and loaded really neatly.